Hi there. Welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number four for chapter nine, and the topic is partial differential equations. In this video, we continue our study of the heat equation in one space dimension, but with a different type of boundary condition, the Neumann boundary condition. So let me explain in detail what that means. So here we have the heat equation, and then here we have the initial temperature being um, prescribed. And then here in red are the boundary conditions at the two end point. So you note that um, it's now given in terms of the derivative in x, the partial derivative in x. Okay, so u sub x and at x equals 0 and x equal L are fixed to be 0 for all t bigger than 0. So what is the physical meaning of this condition? So let's take a look at this condition. So this condition basically says the temperature change, the gradient of the temperature in the x direction at the boundary point is 0. Here is at the zero, here is at the other end at L. So we know that um, the heat will flow in the direction of the gradient of the temperature. If the gradient is zero at those two points, then this basically means uh, no heat will flow through there. And physically, this would mean that the two end points of this rod are insulated. So how can we solve this problem? And how does it differ from the previous one where we have temperature equals zero at the two end? Okay, let's dive into the details. So here I will be a little bit brief because um, the procedure here would be basically the same as um, what we have done for the Dirichlet boundary conditions. We will separate the variables and we will derive eigenvalue problems for the function f that only depend on x and then later to solve the one g that only depend on t. Okay, So if you carry that out, you know the boundary condition doesn't really affect um, the PDE. So the you still have this eigenvalue problem. And then what is different here would be um, the boundary conditions are changed. So earlier you would have f of 0 equals 0, and now is the derivative in x. So f prime at 0 is 0, and then f prime at L equals 0. So again, we see that this is an eigenvalue problem that we are familiar with. We solved it as one of the standard problems. And we know that the eigenvalues p here has to be non-negative. Then we can write it um, as p equal omega square, where omega is bigger than 0. And the solution will be a cosine function, cosine of omega nx. Okay, and the omega n is um, m pi over l for n equal 0, 1, 2. So remember, there is 0 here. Okay, so um, that means uh, 0 is an eigenvalue and the constant function is an eigenfunction. Yeah, so um, we stress that n equals 0, lambda equals 0 is an eigenvalue for this problem. Okay, so the equation for g also remains the same, and therefore the solution is also the same. You just have an exponential decay here with cn, which is arbitrary right now, and uh, the lambda n is the same, cn pi over l for n from 1 to 3. So for each index n, we'll have a fn and the gn, and we'll have a solution which we call the eigenfunctions. So un is fn times gm, plugging in, this is the gn, and this is the fn, and n from 0, 1, 2, and so on. And then we know that um, if we sum up all of these, these each of these 
is a solution. If you sum them all up, you still get a solution. And this solution in terms of a series is called the formal solution. So here we can write the formal solution out. We can take out the term n equals zero because it just gives you c zero. And plus, and the summation n is from one to infinity of this expression. So this expression is very similar to the one with the Dirichlet boundary condition, except that the sine function there is now a cosine function. So we have a, a, an at t equals zero, and this is a Fourier cosine series. OK, so in fact, that is what we will use to find um, the constants C, C0, C1, C2, and so on. So putting the initial condition, we see that we have this Fourier cosine series, which should match f of x. So this we already know how to solve, how to find these coefficients. In our discussion of the Fourier series and the half range expansion, Okay, so let's mark this in red. Cm's must be the Fourier cosine coefficient for the even half range expansion of f. Okay, so we can just use the formulas we derived there to write out. So C0 will be 1 over L integral from 0 to L of fx. And then Cn's will be um, 2 over L the integral of f times the cosine with the m pi x. OK, so before we uh, move on, let's summarize um, heat equation with Neumann boundary condition. Given like that, we'll have a formal solution written in terms of series plus a constant. And here, the omega n is m pi over l. And lambda n is uh, c m pi over l. And then c0 is this integral. And then all the cn's are these integrals in the same as um, finding the Fourier cosine series. OK, now let's look at how this solution behaves. Let's make some discussions about the properties of this solution. So first we see that for each um, of the eigenfunction, um, we have harmonic oscillation in x, the f function, and exponential decay in, k, in t. And then um, the speed of decay would depend on the lambda n, actually is the lambda n square, which is m pi c over l. So for larger n, the decay is faster. So that means the higher frequency components are killed very quickly. Okay? And after a while, what remains in the solution are the terms with small n. And then we see because the presence of the exponential decay in t as time grows, and the amplitude of the oscillation becomes smaller and smaller, and it goes to zero. So asymptotically, um, the solution tends to zero. Okay, so these are also called the steady state, and we'll have a little discussion on that. Okay, so now we are interested in the steady state for heat equation in 1D, the standard form. So the main assumption is the following. It is uh, verified by the solution because of the exponential decay of all the amplitudes okay, in time. So as time goes to infinity, solution will settle down at um, some steady state and remains um, something that does not change in time anymore. Okay, So the important sentence here does not change in time. And that will allow us to easily find out the steady state. OK, so let's call this steady state capital U of x. And then we know that capital U of t is 0. And therefore, in the heat equation, this is 0. Then you have uxx is 0. Okay, uxx for, cap for capital U, which is the function of x only, just becomes the second derivative. 
So one space dimension function, if the second derivative is zero, that means uh, it's a linear function. Okay, so that means u of x will be ax plus b for some suitable constants capital A and capital B, which will be determined by the boundary conditions of the problem. Okay, so let's take a, an example um, on finding the steady states and uh, with the uh, various boundary conditions. Okay, so the first one is um, the boundary condition is at zero is A and at L is T for the U, the solution for the heat equation. Then we know that the steady state will keep the boundary condition. So capital U at zero will be A and capital U at L will be B. And then we know that um, since this is a um, a straight line, a linear function. One can one can quickly sketch it. So this is x, and that's zero, and that is l. And then you know at zero it takes the value a here, and then at l it takes the value. Let's say that's value b, and uh, this is the y-axis. That's u. So you know um, it has to be a straight line connecting them. So basically, you need to just write out the equation of a line, which is just written here. It starts at the point A, and it goes with this slope, B, B minus A over L, times X. Okay, so here's the second example, which is slightly different boundary condition. So U at 0 is A, but U sub X at L is 0. So that means at the point A, we fix the temperature to be A. And then at the other end, L, we insulate it. There's no heat exchange. And then um, for the steady state, it will keep that. Um, that means uh, at A, uh, at zero, and uh, temperature U will be A. And then at L, U prime will be zero. So what function will satisfy that? Well, one can probably rather easily um, sketch it. So let's look at this. It's x and the u. So at 0 is a. Let's say a is here. And then at l, what it says is that the derivative is 0. So that derivative will um, give you the slope of that line. So it's 0. Therefore, you would just have um, a constant function equals a, okay, all the way to l. Okay, so here's our last example. Um, let's put in some numbers there. So u at 0 is a, and let's put a number ux at l is b. So this is translated into conditions on the steady states. Capital U0 is A, and capital U prime at L is B. So how would a, f a function look like in that case? Well, in the graph, probably it's quite um, clear if one wants to see that. So um, at 0 is A, so it should go through this point A. And then the derivative b here will give you the slope of uh, of uh, of the function u. So um, let's assume that b is a positive number. Then the slope will go up, and then you just go with the slope up until here. And then the slope b will be the slope of that line. Okay, and then you can write out. Um, it's just a plus bx. Let me now end the video here. And next time, we will look into the situation where you have non-homogeneous boundary conditions for the heat equation. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.